E300 is terrible right now, guys, okay? So, as you can see right in front of you, we're on the main page of the UFC right now, and they haven't even got a main event announced for the biggest event, so I feel like they should have already done that. And Dana White made UFC fans all across the world stay up, you know, ruin their sleep schedule, take away time off their lives uh, for a big fight announcement. What was that fight announcement? Yeah. Zhang Wei Li versus Yan Zhao Nan. Now, listen, Zhang Wei Li is pretty fun to watch, usually. However, she does not belong anywhere near the top of this card, this special card, this anniversary card, when just two fights ago, she was in one of the most boring fights of all time. Okay, she should be banished from this card. She shouldn't even, I know it's a title fight, but she shouldn't even be, she should be below fights that are in title fights because she doesn't deserve to be anywhere near the top of the card after that stinker performance, okay? Dana White, what are you doing? Are you trying to dissolve the UFC? Because it seems like you're trying to liquidate it because no one is going to pay for this, okay, Dana? No one's going to buy this. No one. Now, granted, Oliveira versus Sarukin is a good matchup, okay? But let's be honest, there's better matchups for both of them, okay? Maybe not Sarukin, but there's better matchups for Oliveira. Some people want to see him rematch um, Makachev. Some people want to see him fight Gaethje again. But, I mean, you know, Sarukian, is that what he needs? I don't know. They've both just beaten Benil. So, it's like, all right, the two guys that beat Benil, even though Benil technically was worse off after being KO'd by Charles. So, I have no idea what's going on there. Um, it's kind of a bad one for Oliveira because if he loses, he's just never going to get a title shot again. Sarukian's got it all to play for here. Quite a good favourable matchup for him in the terms of rankings and stuff. It's quite low risk, high reward for him. Whereas Oliveira, if he loses this, nada, because he's you know he's thirty four. He won't be able to work his way up again. He'll have to get like three wins, at least, but all by finish to ever be in title contention again. And I can just never see that happening. I think he's a bit injury prone as well, so can't see that happening. It's a must win for him, and also Sarukin. I don't think it's going to be a fun fight. I think it's going to be grappling heavy and pretty uneventful grappling. It isn't going to be like Makachev, Sarukian, where it's all, oh my God, it's so high level. And honestly, Sarukian's not actually that good on the feet. I know he just knocked out Dariush, but Dariush is a finished flop now. Uh, Charles Oliveira cleaned him up. So on the feet, if this stays standing, it'll be fun because I think they're actually fairly similar levels of striking. Oliveira's striking isn't as sharp as a lot of people rate it, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, we'll have to see, but when it's UFC 300, and I'm going to get to the rest of the, the rankings, so don't worry in the matchups, you need something big, okay, there's only one of these every so-and-so years, you know, UFC 200 was like six years ago, wasn't it, it was, it was a long time ago, anyway, it was a long time ago, it was a really big event, okay, I'm pretty sure Brock Lesnar returned on it, I haven't looked at the exact card, I can't really remember it, but it had it was a it was a big card. I, don't, I can't remember if it was a good card because you know, good matchup like you know exciting matchup doesn't actually mean an exciting fight. But um, you want that star, okay? And we don't have that. I know Oliveira is kind of a big star. It's not a title fight though. Armin's not the biggest draw. You know, most fans know who he is, but he's not a huge draw, is he? He's not extremely entertaining to watch. And um, we want a star. So ideally. You know, you'd get you'd get Conor McGregor, but the UFC apparently he says they didn't want him on this card, so it just makes you wonder why. I have no idea. I can't tell you because to me this was the perfect card for McGregor. Seemed like he could have actually made it as well, recovered. Um, he's skinnier now, and he could have had camp. So I don't really know what was going on there, but he would have had to have camp over Christmas, so he probably wouldn't have wanted that. Um, however, there's other stars. Okay, you have. Tom Aspinall, he's a really big draw now, he's the interim champ, you have Alex Pereira, that's a matchup you can make, you could say, listen Alex, why don't you try and set a record, go up a weight class again, and try and win the heavyweight belt, we'll pay you loads of money, because you're headlining the biggest event, you'll get pay-per-view points and everything, and if you lose, it doesn't matter, because you've still got your light heavyweight belt to defend, so it's very low risk for you, all you're doing is setting yourself a chance to break a record, and become a triple champ, uh, meanwhile, to Tom Aspinall, it's good for him. He'd want that fight. 
right, listen, you've got a guy that can't grapple, so you can probably just take him down in the first round and submit him. If not, you've still got a pretty good chance on the feet because you're going to be bigger than him. He'd be like, yeah, absolutely. I want to fight Alex Pereira for a lot of money. But um, that's not going to happen. Stipe will never fight anyone who isn't Jones because he's washed and terrible and doesn't deserve to be in the UFC anymore. And um, Jones is injured and he won't even fight Tom if he wasn't injured. Trust me, that fight's never happening. He's going to duck him for eternity. So, you know, it leaves you with a, a lot of stars not available because Dana, the genius, booked all his stars for 298, 297 and 299. So nice on there, Dana. Did you not really think about the biggest event of the entire year, mate? No? OK, because in my mind, if I was the matchmaker, I'd maybe think, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't book all my stars the pay-per-view before or the pay the last few pay-per-views before the biggest event of the year because it's not a very good idea, Dana, is it? And if you look at 299, we should swap the events. We should just say, listen, guys, reschedule. You're on the you're on the April card, the 300, and everyone on 300, you're fighting a month earlier or two weeks earlier or whatever because, honestly, that card is so much better, so much better. Really legit card, 299. It should have been 300. They've made a huge mistake there because no one cares about 299 just because of the number. You know what I mean? It just doesn't sound good. 300 sounds good. They've even gave, given it a special decal. If you click on the website, it comes up in a special thing. They've got like custom writing for 300. They clearly wanted to care. You know, marketing's doing their job. Dana White and the matchmakers are not doing theirs. They're letting it down. And this is when the UFC makes stupid moves. Now, you're probably wondering, why has Dana done that? Well, to be honest, the only reason I can come to is I'm pretty sure Ngannou's fighting the week of 299. So, once again, petty Dana, who can't accept a loss, is trying to ruin Francis Ngannou's moment by trying to sell a card on the same week as him. But to be honest, it's not going to work, okay? Because people are still going to watch Ngannou fight, no matter what, okay? You could put out a crazy card... And it's not, it's just people are going to watch Ngannou. He has to accept that. In fact, real fans are going to watch both, okay? So it doesn't really matter. He's not losing many fans. You don't really hear someone go, oh, I watched um, I watched the boxing today, so I'm not going to watch the UFC. Like, it doesn't really make sense. So that's my opinion on that. And he had opportunities to make hype, hype matchups, and he didn't push it hard enough. The Pereira... Aspinall one, among others. So now it looks like we're stuck with uh, Bilal versus Leon, which is not three hundred worthy. Okay, now you know is that a fight? I want to say yeah. Bilal needs a shot, and Leon will probably win. And I don't really want Bilal as a champ, but I, I like Leon. I think he's good. He's British, and he'll be on like he might even be he might even be close to the winning record. I think I, I don't think he's far behind GSP's streak. So um he'll be on like thirteen or fourteen I think so um yeah so he'll want to he'll want to do that I think Leon wins that so um yeah that seems like the event we're gonna get and honestly just imagine in your eyes seeing Mohammed Edwards as the main event no one wants to see that I'm sorry guys that's like that's got co-main event written all over it okay because I guarantee you it won't be a fun fight I promise the fight they should have done the the actual doable fight. Well, maybe not doable anymore. Is Pereira Adesanya free at light heavyweight for the title? Because they're both one and one in the UFC with each other. It was the fight to make. I think Adesanya's injured now, but who knows? You know, if he was on a different course time wise, he may have not got injured because he would have been in camp earlier and blah, 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 blah. If the UFC had told him they should have done that. Huge matchup, free. It would have been the trilogy, so it all works out. Could have marketed that really well. It's a, fight, it's a fight even casuals love because Adesanya's got loads of uh, fanboys and Pereira has fans as well. So um, I think they should have done that. They didn't. They've messed up. The UFC is making such bad business decisions this last two years. They're throwing away viewers. They're throwing away money. Their pay-per-views are overpriced. They're not, they're not delivering. Night, like 80% of the time, UFC isn't as good as what it should be. And then you have that, you're thinking, right, I'm done with UFC, it's frustrating me, it's annoying. My favourite fighters are getting finished by boring fighters in terrible matchups. I'm done. And then you'll watch a pay-per-view and it'll slap and you'll be like, oh my God, I love the UFC. And then the cycle repeats. That again and again and again, that's all it's felt like this year, this last year and a half. 
because the fighters just haven't been doing it. Um, they need McGregor back. They need to get a new base of fans in, new casuals. Um, he he can revive the year just with his market and he'll bring money in. The UFC need McGregor. They thought they didn't, they do. They have no McGregor star. John Jones isn't a McGregor star because he's only going to fight someone that no one cares about. Stipe is washed, okay? He doesn't deserve a title shot. I'm not even going to bother talking about how finished he is. He got knocked out three years ago and he hasn't fought since. So we're not even going to bother there. But they don't have a star, okay? The UFC, they don't have a McGregor. Sean O'Malley is not McGregor. Adesanya is not McGregor. Pereira can't speak enough English, so he's not marketable enough. Aspinall, I mean, you know, he has potential, but he isn't there yet because he can't beat John Jones. If Aspinall beat John Jones, he would be the new star because he's the guy that beat John Jones and he doesn't have a bad track record of all the missed it, all the things that John Jones has done over the years that are wrong. And he's a like likable guy. I think eighty five percent of people would agree. I think he is anyway. And that would have been the new star. But they're not making that match up. Like, let me just run something for you, UFC. John Jones is thirty seven or thirty six. Okay, I think he's thirty seven in a few months. He isn't gonna fight. He's gonna have maximum two fights at the most. I'll be surprised if he has two. I think he's gonna do one. Try and get the Stipe fight. That's it and done. Because he'll win and retire. And then claim he's the go, even though he's a cheater. And then you have a bit of a predicament because Tom Aspinall or Cyril Gann will probably become champ or Almeida. And you'll have this thing, oh yeah, but they all lose to Jones. So anyone in heavy, the heavyweight division will be killed forever because they all lose to Jones. So what's what's the point of a champion? So what they need to do is the UFC, they need to, they need to think money moves here and they need to put John Jones against Tom Aspinall, hope he loses, which I think he probably will now, he's old, he's slow, and I think Tom Aspinall's a good matchup for him because he's so well-rounded, hope that Aspinall beats him, and there you go, you have the guy that beat John Jones, no one's ever beat John Jones, there's your new star, there's your new McGregor star, but no, the UFC will not do that, they're throwing money down the drain, angry rant over, thank you guys so much for watching, leave a comment, tell me what you think about UFC 300 and the disaster that it's looking like, alright, Yuri Prohaska, Alexander Rakic, it's going to be good, Calvin Qatar, Aljamain Sterling should be okay, Calvin Qatar brings a fight, Aljamain Sterling is probably going to try and make it boring, Bo Nickel, Cody Brundage, why did you give Bo Nickel that fight, genuinely, we know what's going to happen, rip Cody Brundage, thank you guys for watching.